This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to electric vehicles in Aotearoa. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup of news from the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. We start today's show with the official start of deliveries in the US of the Chevrolet Equinox EV, a car that's unlikely to go on sale in Aotearoa, but which we certainly think is well worth knowing about. While Chevy says it hopes to have two LT, three LT and three RS models at dealerships and in customers' hands by the end of this month, initial deliveries are of the two RS and two RS launch edition vehicles, models that start at $44,795 before incentives but after mandatory delivery and handling fees. Opt for an all-wheel drive variant and you'll see about 285 miles or 458 kilometers per charge, but opt for the front wheel drive and you'll see 318 miles of EPA range, that's 511 kilometers. While we unfortunately didn't get invited to the launch event, expect a review as soon as we can beg or borrow a car. Most mainstream automakers are currently backing off their EV investments, fearing disinterest from buyers. But Honda has just done the exact opposite. At the tail end of last week, Honda announced it will double its EV investment to 10 trillion yen or 65 billion US dollars through until the end of the decade in order to remain competitive in the marketplace. While Honda's EV offerings around the world aren't exactly large yet, and its only EV on sale in North America is built on a GM platform, the firm says it wants to achieve a 5% return on EV sales investment by 2030, achieving self-sustaining status for its EV arm. As part of those plans, expect seven new models from the brand, some of which will be based on its recently released Zero Series concepts. Ahead of next month's shareholder meeting, at which Tesla shareholders will vote to reinstate Elon Musk's $55 billion remuneration package and more, Elon Musk was affirming his previous threats to remove AI and robotics from Tesla if things don't go his way. Responding to a post on X from Teslanomics, which said, quote, if Elon gets 25% voting power, Tesla is reincorporated in Texas and compensation package is approved, then AI and robotics stays within Tesla and the company can march on forward to become the largest company in the world, end quote. Elon Musk gave a single word response. Yes, suggesting yet again that if Tesla shareholders vote against Musk, he could establish a separate firm from Tesla to develop AI and robotics. Given Musk's focus of late has been on AI and robotics, and an increasing number of shareholders are growing tired of how things are being run at Tesla, next month's vote will be very interesting indeed. As we covered a few weeks ago on the show, Ford's electric division, Model E, made a sizable loss in its first quarter, and now Ford is looking to save money on its EV programs. This week, via Detroit Business, we learned that Ford has sent a memo to its suppliers asking them to help reduce costs as the Blue Oval pushes towards EV profitability. It's asking suppliers to create incremental cost reduction proposals for both in-production and future all-electric models and told suppliers, quote, we will all win or lose together, end quote. At the same time, Ford is asking dealerships to pause any EV investments they're making as part of a planned update to its EV dealership program, which is due later this year. Ford has basically told dealerships to pause investments until after its upcoming dealer council meeting this June. It's official. EV charging station vandalism is on the rise. According to reporting from multiple outlets, including Inside EVs, the number of stations seeing the cables cut or stolen is soaring, and it's not just anti-EV sentiment. 
while politically motivated attacks on charging infrastructure are still prevalent in many areas of the US, we're also now seeing thieves cutting high power charging cables with a view to selling them on for scrap metal. There also appear to be hot spots for this kind of action, with some areas getting hit more often than others. In Houston, Texas, for example, five different Tesla supercharger sites were hit by thieves in just two weeks, causing an absolute nightmare for locals looking for a place to charge. And as is always the case, if you see a broken charging station, make sure you report it. If you leased or owned a Chevrolet Bolt EV from 2017 through until 2022, you might be eligible for compensation from a $150 million settlement against GM and LG Energy Solutions. Prior to agreeing to replace battery packs in nearly all 2017 through 19 Chevrolet Bolt EVs after a manufacturing defect was discovered that could lead to increased fire risk, GM pushed software updates to customers' cars that reduced the maximum allowable state of charge in the interests of also reducing the risk of battery fire. That in turn reduced customers' real-world ranges, and thus multiple class action lawsuits were filed. The new settlement covers multiple different class actions, and depending on if you leased or owned a Bolt EV that got the update, you could get up to $1,400 per car. We're going to dig for more information on this one, so watch this space. Renault will officially open the order books in some European markets next week for the first two variants of its Renault 5 e-tech electric hot hatch. Ultimately, the retro-inspired electric hatch will be offered with five different trim options, encompassing two different battery packs and three motor configurations. But the two variants due to go on sale at launch, which will start from €32,900, will feature the larger 52kWh battery pack. A more affordable model with a 40kWh battery pack will follow next year, but exactly what features your car have will depend on where you live. At launch, for example, Spanish and French customers will get full V2G capabilities from their cars, but those in Germany will not for now, getting V2L instead. Battery degradation, a measurement of how battery packs lose their ability to store energy over time, has long been a concern of first-time EV buyers. And long-time EV enthusiasts will tell you that battery degradation tends to be pretty fast in the first few years of ownership before dramatically easing off. Now data from Recurrent backs that up perfectly. It has been monitoring the range when full of more than 12,000 Tesla Model 3 and Model Y cars over the last few years, and it's found that during the first 1,000 days of their lives, these two Tesla models range per charge drop to about 64% of their stated EPA range on average before then stabilizing. That makes for scary headlines, but it's super important to note that this data compares to the Tesla EPA ratings, which are frankly kind of overly optimistic. And even when new, most Teslas only manage about 70% of stated EPA range in the real world. Volvo's EX30 is already proving itself very popular in its launch market in Europe, with the EX30 partly responsible for Volvo's strong EV sales of late. And ahead of the car's launch in North America, it's just launched in China as a direct competitor to some of BYD's current lineup, priced from 200800 one, which is just shy of 28,000 US dollars. The Volvo EX30 will be available with a choice of four different variants, with its longest range version, the EX30 all-wheel drive high-performance Ultra, coming in at almost the exact same price as Volvo will charge in the US for the entry-level EX30 when it goes on sale here later this summer. Expect more markets to get this very popular crossover by the end of the year.
One car that might not come to your market before year's end, though, is the Volkswagen ID7, at least if you live outside of Europe. That's because this week, Volkswagen confirmed that it will delay the launch of the ID7 in North America, citing changing market dynamics and a stronger than expected demand in its home market of Germany. According to the firm, the ID7 Tourer, the wagon variant of the full-size car, is proving very popular with buyers. So popular, in fact, that Volkswagen has decided to focus on fulfilling demand in Europe before launching elsewhere. It's not clear if or when we'll see a launch of the ID7 in the Kiwi marketplace, but I'd love to know if you'd be interested in buying one. So let me know in the down below. Before we get to the last two stories, I have a quick question. Are you in the market for a new EV? Because if you are and you live in Aotearoa, you should totally check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It is cram-packed with all the information you need to pick a car that's right for you and includes plenty of details about available vehicles, daily life with an EV and so much more. So follow that link below and start your journey today. When Tesla launched its Cybertruck, it shared a video at the handover event for first customer deliveries that showed a Cybertruck racing a Porsche 911 while also towing a Porsche 911. During the event, Elon Musk stated the Cybertruck could tow a Porsche 911 across a quarter mile faster than a Porsche 911 driving itself, a statement that grabbed an awful lot of headlines. However, it didn't take too long for people to note Tesla's video only seemed to cover an eighth of a mile and that the physics of said claim just didn't add up. Engineering Explained made some great videos on the topic, and this week the channel, working alongside Motor Trend, debunked Tesla's claims with all of the data double-checked and all the numbers tallied up. The too long didn't read here is that over a quarter mile, even with the slowest Porsche 911 on sale today, the Porsche won every time. Even over half the distance, the Porsche won most of the runs against the Cybertruck, towing a Porsche 911. That said, the Cybertruck, even if it's not Porsche beating in that particular scenario, is still blisteringly quick for a pickup. And finally, traditionally, the largest consumer of electricity in the transportation sector in the US has been public transit, with light rail and commuter rail using the largest amount of electricity. But last year, the combined electricity consumption of all of the light duty electric vehicles in the US, that includes electric motorcycles, cars and trucks, was higher than the total electrical consumption of the rail industry. And that's according to the US Energy Information Administration, which states that on average, rail uses seven megawatt hours of electricity per year, which compared to most countries is tiny. Until you remember that most US passenger trains are still powered by fossil fuels. Last year, the total grid consumption of light-duty EVs rose to 7.596 megawatt hours, eclipsing rail's consumption. It shows EVs are on the rise, but really, I would love to see more countries around the world adopt electric trains and light rail instead of cars, all of course powered by clean, green, renewable electricity. What say you? And on that note, we are done for the day. But before I go, do make sure you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out in the latest in EV news from this channel. And if you haven't switched yet, it is time to switch to Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. It's super easy to make that switch and you'll be helping wean the nation off dirty energy and move on to clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back next week as usual, but in the meantime, be sure to check out other great content on this channel, including some great stuff from the lovely Gavin Kiwi EV Shoebridge. I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield. Have an amazing rest of your day. Kakite! See you next time.